Dear my student, dear my friend, my name is Trung Tu and I'm glad to talk with you about labor relations because I will be your instructor for this module in this semester. I do hope that we can work together, we can share together and we can start together. And I strongly believe that we can overcome all challenge together and we can get back the good outcome together. When we're talking about the labor relation, we can raise up many questions about it. Labor relation is the same with human resource management, or is it the combination between them, or what is employee? Who is employee? Who is employer? There are many government of government. There are many uh, government uh, agency. So which governmental agency involve and directly supervise the relationship between employer and employee. And what is the labor contract? How can I sign the labor contract? And do I need to join labor union? So when I work for the company, what is my income structure? And uh, uh, how can I pay the social insurance or taxes? And when I quit the job, do I, need, do I receive any compensation money? When I'm getting older and retire, how can I get back my salary or how can I enjoy my pension scheme? So the question will be answered in this subject, labor relation. First of all, today is the first week, so I would like to introduce about our schedule. So we have a 15 weeks. So the first week today, we will discuss about the background and snapshot about labor relation. It means that I give you the background information about what's a labor relation, the nature of labor relation, and also the history of labor relation, and also the relationship between labor relation and human resource management. And the next two weeks, week number two and number three, we discussed about the act of labor relation. It means that who will join in the, the labor relation? Who are they? Employee, who are, who are they? Employer, who are they? And governmental agency, who involved in this relation. The week number four and number five very important. We're talking about labor contract. So, so this is very important because when you graduate university, you should enter the labor market. So you should sign the labor contract. So you should uh, know clearly what a labor contract and how can you sign the labor contract. Even you sign labor contract, if you revise it, how, how can? Or if you want to delay it, how can? Or you want to terminate labor contract, how to do. So this is the content of number four, number five, we discussed about labor contract. Number six, week number six, we discuss about some key issues that might happen in the labor relation. For example, when you did something good, you get a promotion. What a procedure. But when you did something bad, you fail with the promotion, discipline, or the company fire you. So what is procedure? And number seven, and number a, we discuss about collective negotiating and collective agreement. You know that when you conflict with the company, there are two mechanisms to resolve the problem. This is a single individual negotiating and collective negotiating. So collective negotiating is just a life for the case. You and your friend of friend, it means a group of people. You have a conflict with the company. So in this case, you can utilize the representative like labor union as the representative to make the deal with the owner, like the company. So we call it the collective nego ne negotiating. Another thing is collective agreement. When you're working with a company, you must sign the labor contract, of course, of course. But in some companies, they will deliver another kind of contract we call collective agreement. So collective agreement look like a mother company. So your labor contract should be followed the mother company. So what is it? You can find out the answer in the week number seven and number eight. Week number nine and number ten, another, another thing, the very important in life. This is the, you have heard about the power of crowd. So too many people team up together can meet the power. So strike in the same way. So you can find out strike is good or bad. And this week number nine and number ten. Week number eleven, we discussed about public relation, um, public sector. Labor relation in public sector. I remember many people said that I want, really want to work for a private sector or foreign invest company. But you dare to work for the public sector like 
military office, police office, governmental agency. So if you want to do it, you can find out it in week number 11. And what is the speciality between the public city, a public sector and private sector? Another thing in week number 12, relations, uh, labor relations in the US, China and Japan and Singapore. Why I choose this country? Because the US is the largest economy in the world and also promising uh, land for working for own people. So how about China? We are living like a giant in China. So Vietnam and China have many, many things simili similar. So is there any speciality in China that Vietnam can even play in the labor market? And about Japan, this is the symbol of the hardworking country. So how, what can we learn from them? And Singapore and Vietnam are the same country as ASEAN bloc. And ASEAN country plan to open the labor market. And you think that someday Singapore people will come to Vietnam and Vietnam people can go to Singapore to work. And this is the new trend in the future. And week number three, 13 and 14 is the time for you, this is the time to sign. You will uh, conduct the material and make the presentation and you can earn the midterm score. So I will give the introduction later. Week number 15, the last week, I made the summary and conclusion for all the courses. And this is the schedule of the course. About the syllabus and reference. Uh, syllabus is available on the website. You can visit the www.hufflet.edu.vn and download the syllabus. Syllabus is a material that describes clearly about the, for every single lesson for the whole course. And it also instructs what your mission, what is my mission instructs the, and you can follow it about the book and reference, Zhao Ching Quan Hai Lao Dao, or Labor Relations Textbook is a must. You can get another reference books like Quan Chi Nguồn Nhân Lược, Human Resource Management, or Quan Chi Nhân Sự, Manpower Management at Reference. All books and reference available are at a Hufflet Library. And how to evaluate your course? So I can divide here in your course is construct based on four elements. The first is the attendance check account for 10%. The second is exercise. You conduct a personal test, it's conduct for 10%. And middle, midterm examination, you conduct group presentation and it account for 20%. And the final one, a final examination, remember, it account for 60%. And you must join in the examination. And this is the 90 minute writing examination and without the book and reference. So this is the result. So here is my contact point. You can contact me anytime I'm willing to here are you. And this is my Zalo number, my telephone, and my email. So welcome to my class. As I mentioned, today the first week, so we discussed about the introduction of labor relations. So this is the main point of this week. We will discuss about the nature of labor relations. What is labor relations? The history of labor relations and the relationship between human resource management and labor relations. Is it total different or the same or the combination? Firstly, the nature of labor relation. Labor relation is a triangle relation between three factors. Three factor. The first is employee, the second is employer, and the government. So the relation between employee and employer must be supervised, must be covered, must be checked what by the government. So if the employer, I mean the company side, run any policy, it must get the consensus of the employee. I mean that is agreement. And this consensus must be supervised and follow the rule and regulation of the government. For example, for example, the company, they run the uh, recruitment policy. They deliver regulation policy. They make this a salary program, they deliver benefit, discipline, and employment and retirement. These policy must be consensus and must have an agreement with the employee. And this policy must follow the rule and regulation of the government. 
So this is the meaning of the labor relation. Is it a triangle relation and must get the agreement, must get the consensus of three factors, three actors. Another thing is, another thing about the, the nature of the nature of labor relation is labor relation occur in two phase, two phase. When you signing, when you signing a labor contract, okay, and you become a member of company, you start your labor relation. And the first phase of labor relation is you work at the company during the working time and you just focus on to do specific tasks. But what happens if you back home and weaken? The labor relation still be there, still be there. So the second stage of labor relation is the relation between the employee and employer related to right obligation interest during working hour and after work. For example, when you work for a media company, every day you receive a tap from the director to do it from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. This is the first day, first day. But in the Saturday, you back home, okay? you play football, and you go travel, something like this. You get an accident. So the company have a responsible for this deal. Even when you close the contract with the company, we terminate the contract with the company, we do no longer become the member of the company, but the company not yet paid compensation, not yet give the social insurance book. So at this time, labor relations still remain here. So there are two stay of labor relations when you work for the company. So come back, come back. So the first one is, the nature of labor relation is, this is a triangle relation between government, employee, and employer. And if the company deliver any policy, it must have the consensus, the agreement of the employee, and must be follow the rule and regulation of the government. This is the first nature of rela labor relation. The second one is, when you become the member of the company, you kick off labor relation, and there are two stages of the labor relation. This is during your working time, and during your working time, and afterwards. Okay, so now we move to another thing. This is the history of labor relation. But before that, have a look about some pictures. What is it? This is a very early stage of our human being society. We call that basic communism or primitive communism. In this case, in this time, at this time, our grandfather every day go to the jungle to hunt the animal. And our grand grandmother Every day go to the field to collect vegetables. At the end of the day, they come back to the cage, something, okay? And they share the food, they share the meal, and they work together, they live together. So this is the early stage of our being, human being society. What happened next? This is the second society. We call that slavery. In our society, only two classes. The first class is slave, and the second class is the slave owner. In the society, only two classes. And the next one is feudalism. The society only have two classes. The first class is the king and the queen. They live in the palace. Another class is the farmer. They live in the field. So the farmer work in the field and they give back the product to the king and the queen. So this is the meaning of the feudalism. And what else? What is it? This is the capitalism. Capitalism only have main, two main classes. This is the worker and Capitalist. The capitalist own the factory, own the material, worker have nothing. So worker must work for the capitalist, and capitalist pay back the something like salary money to the worker. So this is the meaning of the capitalism. So have a look. So what the history of labor relations? In the primitive communism, no factory, no government, no restaurant no labor contract, and of course, no labor relation. How about slavery? Of course, only slave and slave owner. Slave must do everything for slave owner, even he or she will die. So no labor relation. How about feudalism? Feudalism? The farmer can negotiate with the king and the queen about the products? No. So the farmer can sign the rent contract with the king and the queen? Absolutely no. So in the feudalism, no labor relation. Actually, labor relation comes up 
with the appearance of capitalists in the 18th century. And at the beginning stage, the labor relations occur in the factory side, or I mean that the factory or manufacturing side. So they call that industrial. Lately, the labor relation comes up in the many sectors like agriculture, service, governmental, uh, governmental agency, and the other one. So we call that love, labor relation. So this is the history of labor relation. And one more thing, the development of labor relation. So there are four stages of development of labor relation. The first stage in early 1920, with the appearance of human resource department. And the second stage in 1930, is the right back of the labor relation. And the third stage is the recovery of the human resource department in 1970. And today, this is the combination between human resource and labor relation. So I will explain one by one. The first stage in 2020, 1920. You know that 1920 is the post era of the First World War. The First World War happened in 1914 and 1918. It killed 100 million people in the European. It destroyed all the factory in the European country. So when the war ended, the economy in European collapsed. So the mission of factory in the European last time is recruit the new worker to recover the economy. And they recruit too many workers. So in order to recruit the new member, new worker, they should establish the human resource to recruit, to train, and to push the new worker into the factory. That's why they should establish the human resource department. And then in and then when they recruit too many worker, worker, in 1930, too many workers in working in factories, so they need the representative to protect their rights and application. So that's why labor union established. So the person who work at the labor union have a very strong power. So they write back their power at the labor relation. And in the 1970s, with the appearance of new career, for example, IT experts, um, designer, um, filmmaker, or PI experts, or uh, autonomous. And the labor market in this era, this time, faced too many difficulties like the accident, the labor safety, uh, racism, or discrimination. So that's why the labor, un labor union can cover those things. So they should established they should deep, the company should deploy our um, um, deploy or uh, utilize human principle of human resourcement to deal with those problem and today this is uh, for every company they will have a combination between human resource and labor relation this is the current state for the company today and the last one, I want to talk about the relationship between the labor relation and human resource management. So the comparison is not good, but I can give you the table to see that what is different between the labor relation and human resource management and what is the backing between them. Firstly, you can see that history, labor relation appear in the 18th century, but human resource management appear later in 20th century. And the actor, labor relations, they focus on the relationship between the employee and employer. And this relationship must be covered, must be watched and seen by the government. But based on the principle of human resource management, they don't care about it. They don't care about the government. They don't care much. They just care about the relationship between employee and employer. This is the internal relation in the company. And labor relations, labor relation, they prefer to establish representative to protect the right application for the employee or employer, for example, labor union. But 
principle of human resource management, they don't care about it. And negotiating, when you have a conflict with a company, there are two mechanisms to deal with the conflict. The first one is you yourself. It means that single individual negotiating. It mostly comes up from human resource management. But when you have conflict with the company, but this problem is not only you, it's the only your friend, your friend, your friend. It means that group people. So at that time, collective negotiating may be utilized. So it comes up from principle of the lab labor relation. And how about the labor dispute? Labor dispute. Labor dispute, for example, strike. So if you have a problem with company, you go to strike, you make the negotiate, negotiate, negotiation with company, but fail. So we move to another thing. If we need the support from government, we need support from labor union. So this is a second, second mechanism. And about decision making, human resource management is one way. Why is it one way? Because when they want to deliver something, they want to deliver some policy, they make it. But for the labor relation, when the company wants to deliver, deliver some policy, the company need the consensus, need the agreement of employee. And this policy must follow, must uh, follow, must meet up with the rule and regulation of the government. So this is the decision making. And of the vision, human resource management principle mostly focus on profit because Profits are more important. And they think that if something happened to the company, they can find the stuff. But for the labor, rela labor relation, they want to keep the company prestige, company image by maintaining the work power. So this is different between labor relation and human resource management. Human resource management. So I would like to review about the key content for today. The first week we discussed about the introduction of labor relations. Our main point is nature of labor relations, history of labor relations, and relationship between labor relations and human, report, human resource management. So remember, nature of labor relations is a triangle relation between employee and employer, and this relation must be covered by the government. And the history of labor relations is uh, established with the appearance of the capitalism. Okay, and the relationship between labor relations and human management is the combination as one. And next week, next week we conduct another topic about the uh, actor of labor relations. And the main point include who is employed, who is employer. And there are many ministry, there are many departments, there are many governmental agencies. So which department involved in? and supervise the relations between employee and employer. We discuss next week. But before that, here's your homework. Okay. For example, my father have a coffee farm. He hired somebody to have a coffee. So is he employee? Think about and answer me. Who are employer? Homework number one. Number two, another case. You know Fung Mi the kiss singer. She signed a Something a single contract with the Quang Le Entertainment Company when she was 10 years old. Okay. So is he the employee? So find out the question and answer me. Who are employers? So that's everything for today. Thanks for watching.